Good afternoon. My name is Anders Furistal, and I am a guitarist and musicologist living in Oslo, Norway. I am very happy to be part of this event devoted to Lawrence Crane's work. Unfortunately, I am not able to join you in London, so I will be talking to you today on a pre-recorded video. My perspective is that of a performer of Lawrence Crane's music. I have performed this music on numerous occasions and with different ensembles, and even with Lawrence himself on a couple of occasions. However, I am also addressing you today on behalf of the Artistic Research Project, Performing Precarity. Before going into some reflections on Lawrence Crane's music, I would briefly like to say a few words about the Performing Precarity project. The project is headed by pianist Ellen Ugelvik, and in addition to Ellen, percussionist Jennifer Torrens and Lawrence himself form the core research group. The project also includes a group of associates like myself, as well as composer Lisa Streich and pianist Philip Thomas. The project started up in the fall of 2019 and runs into 2023. The project aims to shed light on aspects concerning contemporary performance practice in music, aspects related in some ways to the term precarity. What is meant by the term precarity and how does it relate to music performance? The term usually refers to a situation characterized by insecurity, instability and risk and is a central term in recent social or political studies. One thinks, for instance, of the work of Michel Foucault or Pierre Bourdieu, but also of 21st century discourses on neoliberal inequality and poverty, or indeed on areas affected by natural disasters or violent conflict. So although not a term often used in conjunction with music, neither in relation to performance nor composition, the term delimits a fruitful area of investigation, in the project, we are concerned not so much with musical style or structure, but rather on questions related to performance. For example, questions concerning mastery, autonomy, identity or interdependency. It's this latter term, interdependency, that I will pursue in the following. One type of performance situation that we are working on in the project is a kind of situation or piece where performers are working together on a single sound source or musical apparatus. A good example of such a piece is the piece B by Danish composer Simon Löffler. B is written for three performers playing guitar effects pedals and fluorescent lamps. The performers turn on or off the daisy chain pedals connected in a loop so that they produce feedback sounds, the different pitches being the result of which pedals are on or off at a certain point. All performers also have an on-off pedal for their respective fluorescent lamp. The performers also engage actively with the electric current. Player 1 produces earth hum with a loose jack cable and at a certain point the performers start touching the lamps as well as each other's skin in order to create a wild earth noise. The performers are explicitly dependent on each other and indeed on each other's bodies in order to achieve a satisfactory musical result. An interdependency that goes beyond what one finds in a typical chamber music situation. Now, it seems safe to say that the performers and technical apparatus of B is a network, a chain of interconnected elements. The network is an important figure in the Performing Precarity project, as it helps us to articulate what happens where in a particular situation in a piece. This is not the time to dwell on the network model itself, but we should note three characteristics of this model. 
The first is its spatial aspect, its effect of spatialization, extension and spacing, as Derrida would say. The second is its tangibility and materiality. The third aspect that we should note is how every connection we make, the nodes that make up the network, are sites of risk, but also that they can be subject to scrutiny and subversion. These three aspects are all related to the question of performativity. Let's now turn to Lawrence Crane's piece, Two Meter Harmony, Uncertain Chorales. Two Meter Harmony was commissioned by the Norwegian percussion trio Pinkwins and premiered at the Ultima Festival in September 2020. Written for an out-of-doors event, the site of the first performance was a small patch of grass by the walls of the Akershus Castle in Oslo. The piece was later added to the Performing Precarity portfolio and documented by the group. This is the performance you can see, and hear, occasionally, in the images running in parallel with my voice. In addition to singing, the three performers all play pitch pipes, harmonicas and pre-recorded sign tones. The character of the piece is familiar from a number of other Lawrence Crane pieces. Sparse material made up of repeated chord progressions, soft dynamics, fragile timbres, an idiosyncratic approach to time, as well as a subtle and delicate use of alienation strategies. These musical qualities, important though they are, is not my primary focus in this paper. What I would like to highlight are certain aspects related to the performance itself, the performance of the piece, aspects that perhaps pertain to any musical performance, but which is brought to light with particular force in this piece. These are sharing, care and the delimitation of space. The title, Two Meter Harmony, relates to the Covid pandemic and refers to the social distancing regime in effect in Norway at the time of composition. The piece was written with a certain distance between the performers in mind, and this detail is important. It's also important to consider that the piece was written for an out-of-doors performance. In a typical performance space, like a concert hall, the space itself is already saturated with expectations of the structure of the event of the musical performance. However, in an open space, like a small patch of urban grass, such an institutionalized delimitation is not to be found. But a sense of space is nevertheless established by the three performers, the spacing enhanced by the distance between them. It would not be the same with only two performers, between whom only a back and forth movement could be possible. No, three performers marking three points enable the delimitation of a space.
What is this space? It's a shared space, a space of sharing. It is the result of the interaction between the performers who have to fight for this shared space against all kinds of disturbances and outside forces. Fight is not the right word though, as it suggests a kind of aggressive behavior which is quite alien both to the music itself and the performative mode. No, among the performers there can be no antagonism, only agonism, if we understand by this word exactly sharing. In performing two-meter harmony, the performers need to be actively engaged in sharing their sounds, giving them, so to say, to their co-performers, who in return need to be open and receiving, recipient to the sounds and gestures from the others. This double bind of simultaneously giving and receiving only becomes more acute, or indeed precarious, by the quality of the sounds, by the distance between the performers, by the fragility of the musical time. Thus, the work highlights the collaborative and shared aspect of musical performance. The collaborative element does not only pertain to two-meter harmony, but is found in many, if not all, of Lawrence Crane's music. At least in my experience, in this music, one cannot be content by simply playing one's part. One needs to be actively involved in sending, giving or sharing one's material with one's co-performers. The quartet John White in Berlin would be a good example. In this piece, the musical material itself is very simple, and I beg your pardon for using such a crude and indeed simplistic word. The material is in a way so simple that the question of mastery of the material is not relevant. What's all the more relevant, however, is the collaborative endeavor of performing the work. In this way, Crane's music fosters and even demands a strong sense of communality, of working and indeed being together. The character of the music, the fragility of the textures and sounds, rather suggests a sense of care for one's co-performers, a care for sense of communality among the performers, care to maintain the shared space of the work in face of the risk of collapse. In two-meter harmony, the distance implied only enhances the experience of this spacing.
To sum up, two meter harmony, like Simon Loeffler's B, is a material network, the establishing of relations between the three performers in the act of performing, in the act of maintaining the shared space. It's vital to recognize the extent to which the particular space of performance only exists as long as it is shared. If the spell of the event, which the musical performance is, is broken, if the communality of space for some exterior or interior reason collapses, if the nodes of the network come unhinged, in short, if the sense of care and sharing is lost, this is also the case for the work. This sense comes about through a collaborative practice that is permeated by, and indeed feeds on, risk, interdependency and contingency. Naturally, these are only some preliminary and briefly sketched ideas that arise from working on a piece like Two Meter Harmony. I believe strongly that these ideas can be extended to other works, not only works by Lawrence Crane, nor only those structured around a shared instrumental apparatus like in Simon Leffler's B, but maybe to any other musical performance. That is, that musical performance to a large degree functions as a demarcation of a shared space in time. The demarcation of a space of sharing. Thank you for your attention.